Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. I saw something on a Facebook forum, a real estate forum today, where somebody said, well, the buyer wrote in an as-is addendum on their offer. Um, how do we deal with this as a seller? Newsflash. Sellers, the Arizona contract in paragraph 5 says that all homes in Arizona are to be sold as is. Now, I'm going to go into detail and explain that. Let me read it to you. Condition of premises under warranties. Buyer and seller agree the premises is being sold in its present physical condition as the date of the contract acceptance. Seller makes no warranty to buyer, either express or implied. What does that mean? Well, it simply means that as a seller, you're not obligated to fix anything. You're selling your home. Do you have to fix everything? No. So there's nothing implied that said, here's my house. Everything works 100% soup to nuts. Don't worry about it. But buyers, does that mean you have to accept it? No, that's why there's a 10-day inspection period. During the 10-day inspection period, you have somebody go over the house with a fine-tooth comb, a qualified inspector. He gives you a list of things that need to be repaired, and the negotiations begin. In fact, that's where most deals go to die. I'm not fixing all that. Well, I'm not accepting that. So you need to negotiate. You need to look and go, wow, this thing's got... 30 things that need to be repaired. Now, also keep in mind, when you get that inspection report, your agent is supposed to send that to the selling agent as soon as they receive it. You don't get to hunker down and read that thing and keep it and say, no, it's mine. You don't get to. It has to be sent to the selling agent. Now, that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to let the seller know that there are some things that were uncovered before you even decide to request repairs. So you get the list, you're going over it, they look at it, and they start anticipating, ooh, I didn't know that was busted. I bet they're going to ask that that get fixed. Or maybe I'll go ahead and fix it now before they even ask for it. I see that all the time. It's really a great idea, in my opinion. Not just because you're obligated, but in my opinion, it's a great idea to send it to the seller. Because you don't want to blindside somebody. Sometimes I got a helicopter flying over my house. Sometimes people get that report and it's 60 pages and they go, oh my God, this is ridiculous. I hate this inspector. So you want to send it to the agent and say, you know, on the surface, here's a couple of things that we're concerned about, but we're going to be sending you a detailed request on what we'd like to see repaired very, very soon within that 10-day window. Now, sellers, you get to look at that. You've got time to review it. You've actually got five days, which I don't recommend taking that long. But sometimes you have to have somebody else come in and verify it. Like if somebody says your roof's bad, well, you're, you're going to want a second opinion. So try to get that scheduled as fast as you can. Then you send back and go, okay, here's what I'm willing to repair. Now the buyer can say, I don't like that. I wanted five things fixed. They're only fixing two. You can go back and forth until you get that agreed on. Now you have a binding contract. The inspection period is over. Now, what about a buyer sending you an offer that says they're willing to buy your house as is? Because you know what? If they get a report back and it's really bad, they can walk away. Because their agreement was not to ask you to fix anything. So they're not going to ask you to fix it. They're just not going to buy the house. Scary, huh? But they can. So you get this contract that says, buyer's willing to buy this as is. And it comes back and you got galvanized plumbing. You've got uh, roots going through the sewer. Your roof is shot. The electric panel shot. Swimming pool's got a huge leak in the bottom of it. Well, he wasn't going to ask you to fix all that, but by all means, they're not going to buy the house. So you need to be prepared for that as a seller. And buyers, you're not as obligated as you think you are when you write an offer that's as is. Now, it is only comforting in the fact that the seller can say, well, I know they're not going to nickel and dime me on repairs. That's acceptable but they can still get out because during the 10 day inspection period, it's not just about your house. It's about the neighborhood, the HOA, the CCNRs, everything that pertains to living there. You need to send a seller disclosure form that answers a lot of questions that again, for the seller that protects you, but the buyer also gets to look at it and go, Ooh, I didn't know they were close to an airport. You should, you should know the neighborhood, but as a seller, you need to disclose that. Now, I saw a survey that came out that said that 63% of buyers were disappointed and upset that the seller did not disclose 
the cost of maintaining the home. Newsflash, that's your job, buyer. It's your job to figure out what it's going to cost to maintain that home. You're going to buy. It's not the seller's job to give you their electrical bill, tell you how much they pay for pool maintenance, how much they pay the lawn guy, what it costs to have maintenance on their water softener. Most sellers will provide that if you ask, but you have to ask. But you need to look into the cost of owning a home. How much are the taxes? When was the last time it was assessed? How much did it go up? How long has the HOA fee been this amount? Is it going to go up? So it's all up to you. You don't want any surprises. It's not up to the seller. So I was very surprised to see that that number was as high as it was. But it also tells you the buyer's agents are not doing a very good job telling the buyer, now, look, we got to find out some information here for you. When you go to buy a house, understand it's going to cost you some money to maintain this place. You don't have a landlord anymore. You can't just get on the phone and go, toilet's broken. You're going to have to repair these things. So set some money aside for repairs. Now, when you buy the house as is, also make sure you do your due diligence and you figure out what needs to be fixed so that you don't have any surprises there as well. Sellers, are you surprised that when you sell a house, you have to sell it as as is condition? Did you know that was already in the contract? A lot of people don't know that. There's also the due diligence period that I touched on right here where it says 10 days or you can enter whatever time period you want. You want 15 days because you're out of state, you need to fly out here. You want five days because you want to get it over with. You can put in however many days you want on the due diligence. And it says the buyer at the buyer's expense, conduct all desired physical, environmental, and other types of inspections and investigations to determine the value and condition of the premises. Make inquiries, consult government agencies, lenders, insurance agents, architects, and other appropriate persons and entities concerning the suitability of the premise and the surrounding areas, plus building and zoning laws. Insurance. You bought this house. You looked at the payment, everything. You like the neighborhood. You're having it inspected. How much is your home insurance going to be? Find out first before you buy on the dotted line. There may be something going on in that neighborhood where insurance policy is going, oh, we're not, in, we're in a flood zone. We're, we're going to charge you through the roof to insure that place. You don't want that to be a surprise later. You need to understand that during the inspection period. Because once you've gone past the inspection period and then your insurance company hits you with the bad news, you're still obligated to that contract. So if you back out, you're going to lose your earnest money. So it's all about protecting your good faith deposit. And for sellers, it's all about being able to negotiate to make sure that you can hold the deal together. Yes, you can sell it as is. Is that a good idea? Probably not. Do you have any questions? Shoot me an email, Rick. RickHelps.com. Take care.